Okay, so now here is another example of a rational inequality that is not, that zero is not on the right side or the left side depending. So first thing we're going to do is add two to both sides. And remember when you add two, it will not share the same denominator. So you have to take the time and multiply the numerator and the denominator by the 5x subtract 15 and then simplify. So now that new inequality will share. So when I write the one denominator now, I'm going to go ahead and factor out the 5 that they both have in common, which would leave x minus 3. So now we know x is equal to 3, but technically it can't be equal to 3. So that's where the asymptote will be. And then in the numerator, we'll have 3x minus 22. Um, and that's a plus 2. So 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times negative 15 is negative 30. So let's see, 3x plus 10x is 13x. Negative 22, negative 30 is negative 52. Well, 13 goes into 52. So I'm going to factor out a 13. And for those of you that wouldn't have known that off the top of your head, whenever you have a numerator like that with two things, just take the, the smaller number and um, or take the larger number and divide it by the smaller number to see if it will factor with an integer. And if it does, go ahead and factor it. So now we know our two critical values. Uh, positive 3 and positive 4. I'm going to leave some. Oh, this will be annoying because you'll have a fraction that you have to deal with. I um, want to make sure that that's right. All right. And so here are your three intervals. Negative infinity to 3. Ooh, let me think about this for a second. So now this is an inequality that is greater than or equal, so normally we'd use square brackets. However, when it's in the denominator, remember that's where the asymptote will be. And you can't ever touch an asymptote. So even though there is a solid line, whatever values in the denominator still will get the open parentheses. But the numerator value will get the square brackets. So for this interval, It'll be left, it'll be a parentheses on the left and a square bracket on the right. And for this interval, a square bracket next to four, and then of course open parentheses next to infinity. All right. So now you're going to take your, oh, we're going to pick our easy value. So the easiest number less than three is zero. The easiest number greater than four, I choose 10 because it's really easy to work with 10. Um, this is going to be a pain, but 3.5. All right, and I'm going to use this version. So notice they there's both a positive number on the outside. So I'm going to ignore, well, yeah, we can ignore because a positive divide positive is positive. So we're going to just focus on the inside stuff, or I guess we could put positive positive. And this time it is greater than or equal to zero. Excuse me. Okay. So we're going to put zero. Zero subtract four is negative four. So that'll be a negative. Zero subtract three. And negative divide negative is positive. Positive times positive, positive. So is a positive number greater than or equal to zero? That's true. So we know this interval works, All right? Now let's put in 3.5. 3.5 is smaller than 4, so when you take 3.5, subtract 4, you get a negative 0.5. But 3.5 is bigger than 3, so 3.5, subtract 3, is positive 0.5. 
a negative divide positive is negative, and then a negative times positive negative. So is a ne negative number greater than or equal to zero? False. All right, and then finally 10. 10 is bigger than four, 10 is bigger than three, so we end up with positive. So we're back to positive numbers greater than or equal to zero, so that's true. So this interval can't be used. So this, the last interval is true. So it's a union. And my guess is what's happening on this graph then. So there's an asymptote here. Maybe a dot right there. All right, so let's see. These are the intervals where it's greater than zero. So my guess is this graph, oops, here, let me do this. This graph is probably or sorry, I don't know. It could be doing something like that. And then the asymptote that they're both headed towards is probably at 13 fifths, not at the, yeah, at 13 fifths. So rather than that being the x-axis, but anyway, all right. So, but for these purposes, you won't need to know that. You'll need to know the true, the false. I was just wanting you to see, you could type that also into Desmos to see the shaded areas. So in this case, the shaded areas are this interval. These are the shaded areas. All right, that's it.